Hey everyone, uh, last time you saw me I was using a crappy phone to record this and it was just a test of the 6502 from the Nintendo. However, we have upgraded. As you can see there's a lot more parts now attached and it's actually done something. It looks like a lot of wires but really it's really simple. So here's the 6502. Uh, again, Nintendo from a Nintendo, so it's a bit different. It has a sound generator, uh, some joystick inputs right here, uh, a clock out. It actually divides this clock, which is at 20 megahertz. It should be at 21 point something, but whatever, by 12 to get the 1.7 megahertz signal. And it outputs that signal here to synchronize. Uh, this bundle of wires is the address bus. These bundle of wires is the data bus. This is for my memory decoder here. So that's the memory decoder. Uh, I also have now murdered... Okay, it was a broken already. Uh, it was Japanese... It was an old Japanese Sega Genesis Model 1 that I bought broken. So, pfft, waste some money. But it was as is. Anyway, this is the... It, I actually got a... Let me, uh, let's just say this first. This is some SRAM from it, okay? So static RAM. Um, I don't know how you use dynamic RAM. It seems complicated, so I'm sticking with the static RAM. And here we have an EEPROM. So, store my program here. 8 kilobytes. 8 kilobytes. 8 kilobytes. Um, yeah. We're still wired to no op so we can see the, the uh, CPU go through its paces but I'm going to disconnect that once I get some program on the EEPROM. Uh, again, memory decoder. So I have a bit of... Okay, I went through this a few times. Let's see how much pages is. This is all old. Yeah, so this was the... Okay, at first I thought it was a 4K. No, not, then I figured it was an 8K. And... Uh, hmm. I don't really know where it is. It's one of these. Power decoding. Uh, well, anyway. Okay. There it is. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, so I originally had this circuit up, drawn up, and uh, it was the memory, the RAM was supposed to be, or the ROM was supposed to be from 0 to 1 FF, 8 kilobytes, and the RAM from 2000 to 3 FF. This is the address. Uh, however, uh, I found out the ROM, the, the 6502 needs to be, the ROM has to be at the end of the address space because the reset NMI and IRQ vectors are all at the very last, like it's at uh, FFFA to FFF, so that has to be at the back. So I changed it um, to... Uh, I think it's this one actually. Well, wherever it is, it's pretty much now the ROM is at the end. The ROM is now at the end of the address space, and the RAM's at the beginning. So, pretty much we grabbed the, the last three address lines here. Because, well, I'll just explain this to the beginners, but um, because data is being dumped onto the data bus by all three, including this guy, yeah, LCD screen. Uh, th all three devices. The you can get the CPU confused, so you have to shut. You have to turn on and turn off the devices. So how do you do that? You use something called a memory decoder. So all that is is a um, demux or a demultiplexer or decoder, whatever you want to call it. And I take the last three address lines and pretty much say, if I actually have it here. So, if the last ones are 0, 0, and 1, that means we're using, uh, in this case, I think it's RAM or ROM. But we're looking, because these kind of things could change, so we're only looking at the last three. So, in this case, I'm saying if they're all 0, that means it's RAM, so we have the RAM line, uh, enable going here. And if it's all 1, well, it's ROM. So the ROM line is here. Oh, sorry, I got it backwards. That's the ROM, that's the RAM line. Here, this is, uh, I think it's 2000, so 0, 0, zero 1. And then you add a 0, because, but we're not, we're ignoring that 0. And that's, so that, this is going to be from 2000 to 3000. 
So that's how the memory decoder works. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Got a lot of parts actually from that Sega. Where is it? Where is it? It's somewhere around here. Huh. There it is. Got a lot of parts from that Sega actually. Uh, some pseudo statograms. This is DRAM pretending to be statogram. Um, an SRAM chip from the NES. That's not for anywhere else. Another EEPROM. This I got a surplus store, so there's actually some telephone program or something on there. And until I get an eraser, I can't really do much. So I'm waiting for it to come in. Should take another week or so. Uh, more as a pseudo stack RAM. And this is actually interesting. A Yamaha 2612. This is this was used in synthesizers and but more importantly the Sega. And this is where the sound chip the sound came from. So if I wire this up and feed it like I don't know, sonic music, it'll sound, it should sound the same. Uh, okay, so that's a bunch of chips I got. Uh, oh yeah, so this is the EEPROM programmer I bought. It was like literally 30 bucks, so super cheap. Made in China, the software is ridiculous, it's, it's like full of spelling mistakes in English. <laughs> uh, so, it sadly only works on Windows XP or the 32-bit edition of uh, Vista and X7, so I couldn't get it to work on this. Uh, so sadly, but you just drop the chip in, lock it, and then program it using the software. Now, EEPROMs have this window at the top for erasing. You shine UV light in there. It has to be a certain wavelength or else it won't erase. Now, uh, because I don't have any programs, I can't really show you it running right now. So, I will show you the fact that. Well, let's plug it in and I'll show you what I have. Okay. Let's plug her in. So, we see the. Let's say, uh, pin 12 for the address bus. So, we said flickering. Okay, that's, that's all good. <laughs> Uh, that means it's working. The nifty thing actually is, in real life, in my in my sight, I can see it's barely flickering at all, but in the camera it seems to, f I guess it's lower refresh rate or something. Uh, now here's a little experiment I wired up. Uh, this is a PC speaker, and I've wired it to the 12th address lines, or sorry, no, I think it's 9th or 8th or 7th. And here we are, wired up. Now, it accidentally broke, so that's why it's not making noises. But if I press it, you'll hear some sound. There we go. So yeah, that's how a PC speaker seems to work. It just pulses. It sends a pulse, and depending on how fast that pulse is, you get the different waves. So, now, also from that Sega I ripped out, uh, it was a Model 1, so it had the um, headphone jack in the front. And these wires are similar to this thing. So you got, I think it was ground and then left and right speaker. So I'm just gonna wire this up quickly, be right back. Okay, we're back. So there's the ground wire, and I've wired only one of the uh, speaker wires. So I think that's, that's right. So uh, right speaker should only turn on. So if I wire this up, and you hear it coming out of. Yeah, that's the right speaker. As you see, I, if I put my hand over it, and nothing out of the left. If I wire left, obviously it's gonna do the left sound. So you push this little reset button, and here's stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. This this guy here, I'm gonna have to wire up soon. Uh, I've set it up so that it will own, uh, as I said, 2000 to 3000 address space. And the RS line here is wired up to address 1 over there. So it's going to alternate between instruction mode and data mode, I think they call it. I can't really remember. So it'll alternate. I've already ran this, run this through the Arduino because uh, I'm not that good at soldering. So I was worried when I soldered the uh, pins together that uh, <laughs> I did a bad job, and I actually did, so I had to re-solder them. However, now it's perfect, so, uh, yeah. Mm, other than that, that is the whole video.
Thanks for watching. And sorry for the uh, shakiness. <laughs>